Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to Evening Prayer. We've got... I actually shared a community tab on my community tab. A, a great video from John Barlett about uh, forgiveness and about forgiving each other. It's really good and this concept, this understanding is a cornerstone of the Christian faith. We're forgiven. Therefore, we should forgive. Why would we not take the blessing we're given and share it with others, manifest it, magnify it, build it up? And it can be hard. You know, there's a lot of things that happen to us that we just can't let go. That's one of the things that is so important about what we have and the concepts given to us in the Word of God is going over what's happened to us and deciding, is it worth holding on to that anger, that resentment, and that hatred? Because when you don't forgive, when you hang on to that stuff, it always leads to resentment, anger, and hatred. And we know about hatred. If you hate your brother, you've committed murder. And it can it always leads to something negative. It always leads to problems. I have people in my family that really struggle with this because they can't let the past go. My dad, my mother, even my brother. There's always something that manifests that they haven't dealt with and they haven't forgiven. I get upset and, and frustrated and angry at my father and my mother and uh, even my brothers, my brother and other people in my family because of things they do, but I never hold a grudge because I don't want that. I don't want to carry that burden. I forgive them for everything, whatever it is. Whether it's something personal or whether it's something by accident, whatever it is, let it go. Because when you hold on to it, it eats you out. It's a hole inside of you gets eaten out empty. And it empties you. And you become like so many Christians become. No faith, no hope, no peace, and just living for the moment, living for the world. You have no natural love for anyone. The Bible literally says, Jesus said himself, during, and on the last days, the love of many will grow cold. That's exactly what's happening. The key element in that is forgiveness. And in fact, I commented on that video on their uh, YouTube channel, and somebody commented back and says, God doesn't forgive evil. Evidently, he did. He forgave for our trespasses and our evil deeds on the cross. So evidently, he does forgive evil. So there's a lot of people that, that something bad happened to them in their life, and they just can't let it go. My dad is holding on to stuff that happened to him in high school. To the point that he's talked about some pretty serious things. Things that would get him put in prison the rest of his life. And I've had to tell him, do you really think that's the answer? Do you really think that's what the Lord wants you to do? Do you think that's how you're supposed to conduct yourself? you got to let these things go. The same thing with my mother. I'm using them as an example because they're the most prevalent in my life right now. You've got to let that stuff go. If you don't let it go, it will always be a burden on you and it will it hollows you out. And we all got stuff that bothers us. We all got stuff that happened in the past. I still mull over and deal with things, but I process them, move past it, forgive it and move past it. I don't want a burden when I go to heaven. I don't want to carry anger and hate, hatred and resentment when I go to heaven. So I try as hard as I can to forgive things. Now Satan likes to call up a lot of stuff that happened in the past and get me into a mode of being angry. And I'm getting better and better at pushing that stuff away, forgiving it and moving on. It, it's not relevant to my life now because those things that happened in the past don't dictate who I am now. Who I am now is based on my decisions that I make in a godly fashion coming from the scriptures. Who I am now is dictated by the influences of the Holy Spirit. Who I am now is dictated by the path God has set before me and the calling Christ has given me. That's what dictates who I am now. Why would I let things that happened in my past that are done and over with and that cannot be changed, why would I let that hinder me in my adult life? It doesn't make sense. You let the stuff go and move on. And the, and what the one bad thing I see is that the people that hang on to the past take it out on everyone around them. 
And I've been on the brunt of that from several people in my life. I've had that directed and inflicted directly at me. And it's like, how is this my fault? Why are you unloading on me? This, this doesn't pertain to me in any way, shape, or form. I'm here for this. And you got to sit there and listen to hours and hours of somebody just pouring it out and unloading it. And it's like, you need to go see a therapist. This isn't healthy. Because what they do is they sit there and they ruminate over those things. And they sit there and they stew in it. And it just causes more problems. And it puts a complete wall and a barrier between you and the Lord. Why would you do that to yourself? Let it go. You, and you always have to ask yourself, can I change that? Right now, anything that I do, can I change what happened to me? Nope. doesn't matter what you did. I had somebody tell me one time, and I talked them down. I had somebody tell me one time that somebody 25 years ago had, had done something to him in high school. And they wanted to go and get revenge on him. They wanted to kill him. I was like, okay. Let's say that. I, I told him, okay, let's say that happens. Once, once I finally got him to listen, let's say that happens. Does that change what happened to you in the past? No, but it'll make me feel better. I said, no, listen, think about this. Does that change what that person did to them? If you go take their life, does that change what they did to you 25 years ago? I said, think about it for a second. And they thought about it for a second and they're like, well, no. I said, you're still going to have the memory. You're still going to have the anger. You're still going to have the frustration. Taking that person's life that did that to you will not change those things. What it's going to do is it's going to add another element to it. Now you're going to have guilt and conviction over taking a human life for no reason. And there are people every day that deal with this. And no one is there to talk them down. No one's there to tell them that's foolish. Don't think about that because that's not going to lead you anywhere. It's going to get you put in jail. There are people that are still on the run because of things that they've done. There are people that just, here just recently, we had some people at Fort Hood. A husband and wife, one was an in, the husband was an NCO in the Army. Something happened. They, instead of dealing with it, they put their four children in a car and asphyxiated them and then they killed each other. Why would you let the past do that to you? Now, look, I'm guilty of it too. I used to walk in those things, and I still have that will pop up every now and then from the past. That's Satan using that to get me. I fight it back. If we know these things, and you can see the scriptures, we're going to cover a few of them on the screen, not all of them. If we know these things, why would we not go and walk in those concepts and in, and in, in those precepts that were told to by the Lord? And it's a simple concept. But when you hold on to the past, this is what happens. You end up in this state. And I see it in tons of people around me. Ask yourself, can I change it by any act action I do now? Nope. Because even if I go do something, drastic or not, that memory, that anger, that hatred, that resentment, that problem is still going to be there. It's not going to go away. Now I've just taken and added another element to it. Now instead of being free and living your life with that stuff, you go and do something dumb, now you're going to be in jail with all that stuff. You're just adding to the problem. It doesn't fix it. Suicide doesn't fix it either. You're just taking that problem and making it somebody else's problem. So, what's the answer? Forgiveness. Let it go. Un unhook the chain and let it float away. And forgive it. I forgive you. I forgive them. I don't want to hold this grudge, Lord. But it has to start with a desire in your heart to not want to hold on to those things. Let them go. The anger goes away. The frustration goes away. So much goes away. Guys, in a year and a half, I've made more progress through PTSD than the, what, one, two, three and a half years of therapy I was having through psychiatrists and psychologists. Because I forgave those things. I forgave the stuff that people did to me in the army. I forgave the things people said. I went all the way back into my childhood. I'm forgiving all these things. I, I don't want this burden, Lord. I don't want to carry this grudge around. It happened. It's done. There's nothing I can do to change it. Let it go. And I'm systematically working my way through these things and changing these things. And what's happening is that frustration, 
that anger, that hatred, all that stuff is gone. And that's the only way to get rid of it. Now, there's another concept to this forgiving, and that is, if the Lord forgives us, we're supposed to forgive the others. When they had Jesus nailed to the cross and were mocking him, he looked up and said, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. He forgave them for what they did. He was looking at the people that did it to him, he forgave them. If that's the example, why aren't we doing that? Now, there's a lot of people that make excuses. They want their pain. They want to hold on to their pain. Well, you're not going to be miserable the rest of your life. See, when I run into people like that, whether they're family or friends or whoever they are, after a while, if I can't get through to them, I walk away. It's like, oh, I can't be around you anymore. You're a negative pull on my life. That seems harsh and unforgiving and unloving, but why would I stand in lava when lava burns me? Why would I stand in a lightning storm when I'm holding a lightning rod? Why would I make a situation worse that I don't have to make worse? If that person wants to hold on to those things, go for it. Have fun. I can't be in your life. And I know a lot of people that are like that. That they don't understand why I don't hang out with them. They don't understand why I don't partake of those things. But it's because I can't be around that. That's not my problem. And that's not my anger. You've got to let that go. I can't help you let that go. I can't make you let that go. You've got to do it. And unless you're willing to do it, and the people I mentioned earlier in my family, I've talked to all three of them. If you're not willing to let it go, what else can I do for you? I'm not going to sit there and listen to you yell at me when it has nothing to do with me. So you got to figure this stuff out and come to a place where you can let these things go. Because if you don't, you're going to be miserable and you're going to stay miserable. And this will hold back your growth as a Christian. This will hold back your spiritual development. Many people are in that boat. I can name off a whole list of grace preachers that are in that boat. Because they've talked about these things on their channel. They won't let the past go. They won't let what was done to them in the past go. If you don't, if you don't forgive it, it will hold you back spiritually. Because he is a forgiving God. We have to be forgiving children. In Ephesians 4.32, it says, Be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, as God in Christ forgave you. If he forgave us, why would we not forgive them? Yet there are people that don't believe in forgiving. Well, I can't let that go. You probably ought to. God let all your stuff go. What have you done that he's forgiven? Well, if he forgave that for you, you've got to forgive that for them. Why would you hold that burden anyway? Matthew 6, 14, 15. For if you forgive others their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive others their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That couldn't be a clearer statement if I ever read one. You forgive, you'll be forgiven. You don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. That means there are things that you'll do after becoming a Christian, even though the debt's been paid, God may keep that on your account. He may not forgive that for you because you won't forgive other people. This is stuff we, we got to contemplate on and think about. Is it worth me holding on to this stuff when the Bible tells me not to? Is it worth me ruminating on these things and taking it out on other people around me that love me and care for me and are trying to help me? When God says, if you don't forgive, I'm not going to forgive. I'm calling you to do, to do this. This is part of our calling, to forgive, to let it go. Luke 6, 37, judge not and you will not be judged. Condemn not and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. That guy I told you guys about in other videos that had, uh, last year he had told me, that's not in the Bible, judge not unless you be judged. He said, that's not in the Bible. Yeah, it is. It's in Luke and Matthew. <laughs> no, it's not. I, I copied and pasted the scripture. I said, open your Bible and look for yourself. Google it and look it for yourself. It's right there. This guy had anger issues and he wanted to hang on to them. That's why so many Christians are angry. That's why we have all these Black Lives Matter riots. We have Antifa out there. They feel like they've been disenfranchised and they're taking it out on the world around them instead of going, you know what? This doesn't matter anymore. I can do better without hanging on to this minecart taking me straight to hell. I can let it go. I don't have to have this in my life. 
and your life is better. You will see things, hear things, and be aware of things you've never been aware of before if you get the junk out of your life. And one of the biggest junks we have is forgiving, or in this case, not forgiving. It's very, very important for our Christian walk. Colossians 3.13 says, Bearing with one another, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other. As the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Think about how much God has overlooked in your life. First of all, Jesus died on the cross, forgiving your sins. Cast as far as the east to the west. Well, what does Jesus say? If you're faithful to confess, I'm faithful to forgive. Doesn't that give you the indication, plus we just read in Matthew right here, Matthew 6, 14 through 15, doesn't that give you the indication that this is going to have a factor in our Bema seat judgment? Now, there's no condemnation, but it could harm you. This could hinder you. This could cause you issues if you hang on to these things. Let them go. Will your car be filled with gas if you hang on to your anger and resentment? No. Will your house turn into a mansion if you hang on to resentment? No. Will you win a million dollars randomly without entering a contest because you hang on? No. Nothing good comes from hanging on to these things. Only bad. Because this is a weapon Satan uses to clean you out on the inside and you become nothing. Holy Spirit can't work with that stuff and won't. you got to let it go. you got to give it up. It's hard. It's not easy. But when you decide that's what you want to do, he will help you. I know. I'm speaking from experience. Matthew 18, 21, 22. Then Peter came up and said to him, Lord, how often will my brother sin against me and I forgive him? As many as seven times, Jesus said to him. I do not, oh no, as many as seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you seven times, but 70 times seven. Now, is he literally saying 700 times? No. He's saying, always forgive. Never hold a grudge. Never, hang on. If Jesus hung on to grudges, how many people do you think would end up in hell that are going to be forgiven? A lot. There's a lot of people who have talked a lot of smack about Jesus over the years and are now saved Christians. Mark 11, 25, and whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also who is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. Listen to this. And whenever you stand praying, forgive. If you have anything anything against anyone. This is A to Z. One to Googleplex. This is everything, no matter what it is or who it is. So that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. This is a key cornerstone element in the Christian faith. If we can't do this, how can we do anything else in Christ? You will stay a baby Christian on milk for the rest of your life. And you will be miserable the whole time. If you want to grow as a Christian, you've got to implement these things in your life. It's part of the walk we're called to walk. That's one of the concepts I was ostracized for. It's one of the concepts, Chad, I watched on Wall 88, left YouTube because of it, and Twitter. Because people harassed him for that. No, wrong. The walk we're called to walk, one of the key elements in it is forgiveness. So if those people aren't willing to forgive, how do they expect to get forgiven? You can lose a lot at the Bema seat. Jesus said many there will be that will lose, they're going to lose everything, but they'll be saved. They'll suffer great loss, but be saved. Let it go. Let it go. Luke 6, 27, but I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. I have a particular person in my life that's holding on to things from the past that still hates me because of things that happened in the past. I'm trying to be a blessing in that person's life. I'm trying to build them up and help them and develop them. There's another person involved in this situation too. I'm trying to be a blessing and a benefit to them because there's things that happened in the past that I've forgiven involving that person. I don't want to hold a grudge. I'm past that. I'm an adult. I'm grown up. I'm about to turn 50. I'm not going to hold those kind of grudges and carry that into my uh, going and just tipping over into my later years when I start going over the hill. I don't want that in my life. I don't need that in my life. 
But I know there's hatred there. I see it in that person's eyes. I hear it in that person's voice. I love them anyway. And I try to be a blessing to them anyway. Luke 17, 3, 4, pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times in the day and turns to you seven times saying, I repent, you must forgive him. Why? Because God does the same thing. When you sin over and over and you can't get out of that sin, you're struggling with it, you're fighting with it, and you go to the Lord in confession every time, he forgives you every single time. That's why he tells you to do it. You want to be like me? Do what I tell you to do and be like me. Jesus forgives us every time. We need to do the same thing. Let it go. If somebody's mean to you, and forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting what they did. If it's obvious that that person is going to, is using you and, and trying to manipulate you, remove them from your life. But don't hold a grudge. So I'll forgive you. Okay, well, I'm coming back. No, 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 no. You've got things you need to work on. And that doesn't involve me. You go do, take care of your business. Well, I thought you said you forgave me. Oh, I did forgive you. I don't hold a grudge against you, but we can't do this. You got to go. <laughs> he doesn't expect you to stay in that in that situation, but you got to let it go. Don't hate him. Forgive him, just like Jesus did for us. Um, Romans twelve nineteen. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. There's a day for this. There is a day set up for this event. And the people who, when you show them great forgiveness over and over and over again, when you love them anyway, when you help them anyway, when they come to you, hey, I repent. I've had people come to me and tell me, I repent, please forgive me. Because they misjudge me and they commented on it and say, hey, I, I was wrong forgive me. I said, no, there's nothing that needs to be forgiven. I, I haven't hold, held a grudge against you. There's nothing between us that's negative. I don't want that in my life and I don't want it hanging on my spirit. I'm happy they saw the light in turn because I pray for that. There's nothing to forgive because I, have ne I haven't hold, held a grudge and I don't want to hold a grudge. It, it's, I just, it's something that I don't even want on my radar. I'll let it go. Because there's a day for that when the people who have that happen to them over and over and over again and just use it as an opportunity and an excuse, they end up in a situation where they're standing at the judgment seat because they never realized God was speaking to them through you forgiving them. This is why this is a key element. It's good for us and God uses this to wake people up. He uses this to convict them and touch their hearts and to change them and to bring them into repentance to him. We are instruments of the Lord, but not if we're not doing what he told us to do. I'm showing you the scripture. I'm going to link this in the description. 1 Peter 3, 9, do not repay evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless. For to this you were called that you may obtain a blessing confirmation of what i just told you this is part of our calling we're called to walk in a state of forgiveness of everyone you never know when your kindness in the face of someone attacking you and hating you and having a grudge against you may change their heart you and your kindness emanating from the Holy Spirit within you may be just the thing that breaks the stone around their heart. And they turn to the Lord and forgive, and you get to be there for it. What an amazing thing. Let it go, people. Let it go. You hold yourself back spiritually when you hang on to these things. Let it go. <clears throat> Some people don't even realize they're being used by Satan to, to uh, harass you. Let it go. Forgive these things and let them go. Go to the Lord in prayer. We're going to do it tonight. Um, here we go. 1 John 1, 9. What we mentioned earlier, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There is something we're called to do in our Christian walk, and that is to recognize when we make a mistake. Go to him 
and he'll deal with it. And if we do it again, go to him and he'll deal with it again. But we are also called to do this in our daily lives with the people around us. Same thing. Somebody, hey, I did you wrong. Okay, I forgive you. Cool. And then they do it again. Same thing with Jesus. It, it, we're called to be like him. So it's right here in the Word, and I'll link this in the uh, description. So you guys can go through these scriptures more, but it's all over the Bible. Forgiveness is such a key element. And if we don't forgive, what good are we? If we don't forgive, how will we ever expect to develop and to achieve the blessings Christ has poured out for us? How can we ever expect to have a... Um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A triumphal entry. If we hang on to all this junk, it's in the past. It's done. It's over with. We're a new creation. Those things don't hang on us anymore. Those things are spots in our garments. Let them go. Get rid of them. Drive them away. Oops. All right, we got to go to our piece first because that goes right along with this. Let's see. Perfect. Matthew 5, 9. There it is. We're going to use this in prayer. Let's get into some prayer. Lord, we come before you this evening to bless you, to praise you, to honor you, and to glorify you. Our walk that we're called to can glorify you, can honor you, can be a blessing and praise to you. In that walk... You require us certain things. Now, it's not a requirement per se that we have to do it for salvation, but it's a requirement in that if you're going to be my disciples, if you're going to be my people, walk this way. Do these things, and you will be like me, and you will receive the blessing. But how can we do that if we don't observe these things and honor these things, thereby honoring you? It's so important for us to take these concepts that are, that are in your word and apply them to ourselves. Don't look to someone else. Don't bother someone else with what we think is right or wrong. Their walk is different than ours. But us ourselves get into the truth and apply that truth to our lives and change ourselves, thereby setting an example, thereby growing as a Christian. Becoming like you. On the day of redemption, we will be changed and you will finish the work you started in us. This is part of that work. But on that day when people stand on the beam seat, you said in your own words, there will be many who will suffer great loss on that day. A lot of it will be because they can't forgive. And that's going to be a hindrance to people. Lord, we just went through scriptures talking about forgiving. Forgive others and you will be forgiven. If you don't forgive, you're not going to be forgiven. And we know there's no condemnation for us, but Lord, you clearly say we can lose a lot of the Bema Seed. We can lose a lot of blessing, a lot of reward, a lot of position. In some cases, our inheritance. We will have heaven, and that's it. We will be saved, and that's it. Help us forgive the things that happened in our past. Forgive the people that did those things. Forgive ourselves for the mistakes we make, for the evil that we do, for the sin we can't conquer. And instead, come to you in prayer and confession and deal with it. And you take your hand and wipe it away. We, we, we know that because your word tells us it happens. But your scriptures are clear that we must as a cornerstone of our walk with you, we must forgive others. If we don't, we're wrong. And there are so many Christians that are in this boat. This may be one of the, probably the best, greatest, most important prayer video I'll ever do. But this is one of the key elements, the cornerstone of the Christian faith is forgiveness, forgiving those that do us wrong and moving on. If there's an opportunity to correct, we correct. If there's an opportunity to confess, we confess. If there's an opportunity to preach the gospel, we preach the gospel. That you get glorified in all things. Lord, how can we call ourselves children of light if we don't walk in the light? Forgiveness is one of those things that is in the light. 
You tell us over and over, forgive, 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 let it go. It does. It's not going to affect you negatively. In the perception of the, of the carnal mind, yes, it will. But we're not carnal, we're spiritual. So the spiritually minded person doesn't want those things anymore. Let's those things go, walks away. And it's a very good thing. Help us to learn to do this in our lives. First, help us learn how to forgive ourselves for the mistakes we make. Because we're our worst enemies. We beat ourselves up. I'm horrible about beating myself up. But you've taught me how to forgive myself and move forward. Because if I forgive myself, I start wallowing. If I don't forgive myself, I start wallowing in self-pity. And that hinders me. And I can't do that. I need to let it go and grow. Help us learn to forgive ourselves. And then, when we learn to forgive ourselves, help us forgive those that have wronged us. Help us forgive everyone that has ever done anything against us. And I pray that when we do that, that those that we've wronged will forgive us. And by doing that, I pray that you will forgive us. We know we're still going to make mistakes. We know we're still going to do wrong. We know we're still going to mess up. But if we operate in the way you tell us to operate, you tell us very clearly. You do this, and I've got you covered. It's a simple, small thing. Just do it. You're preparing us for heaven. You're preparing us for a brand new life and a new walk and a new everything. But how can we ever attain, obtain it if we don't listen to what you say? Lord, open our ears so that we can listen. Open our eyes so that we can see. Open our minds so that we can know. And open our hearts so that we can understand and make changes and be better. What an amazing thing it will be if we can learn to do these things. How incredible will it be if we can learn to do these things? There's so much for us to learn. There's so much growth for us to obtain. And when we learn to do that internally, it will emanate from us like a light. And those around us will be affected by it. I witness that change happening in the people around me. There are some more than others I wish would change more. But I witness it. And Lord, you know, because you've been there inspiring me to to confess so many things and to share things with these people around me that I love so much, my family and a couple friends. But they've still got to be the ones to make the change. They've got to make the move. The influence is there. The seeds are being planted. I can only do so much. But the wrongs they have done, I forgive. I don't want this burden on my heart. I don't want to carry these burdens. The things that happened in the, well, my whole life from the time I was five on, I remember how people were nasty to me. And even in my adult life, even in the army, I have all the people that did me wrong, the things that were, have been said and done behind my back that I don't know about, I forgive. I forgive it all. I let it go. I release it to you to be dealt with. I don't want this burden on my heart anymore. So, Lord, I pray that all of us hearing this video, reading these scriptures, can stop and think about whether or not us holding on to these will have any positive effect. And when we realize it won't, let it go and forgive it. Because in this single act, well, multiple act, single event, you will be glorified because your spirit and your light will emanate from us when we do so. We will become different. And the people around us will see it and they will change. How, can, how amazing is it that just us walking correctly, just us answering the call and walking the walk you've presented for us, walking in the life and the will you have for us, that we can change things merely by being a true believer, a true son of God. Merely by being spiritual, by being a Christian, by being what we say we are. Because how can we claim something if we're not willing to listen and walk that way? How can I claim to be an attack helicopter if I don't have rocket launchers on my sides? Can't. How can I claim to be an SUV if I don't have tires and wheels and paint and an engine? I can't. In order for us to claim to be something, we must show the attributes of it. We must live the attributes of it. So we must live in a state of forgiveness. As if that being a cornerstone element 
in being a Christian and in our walk with you. In these concepts, we obtain the heart of you, the heart of Christ. We obtain the heart you have, the love that you have, the mercy that you have. You put those things in our hearts and they all tie together and that makes us better. Lord, for me, help me become that. Help me learn those things, apply them, and put them in practice in my life. And use these things for as a positive to everyone around me. And for all that are watching and that are joining in this prayer, Lord, I pray in each individual life, you go and you help them learn the same things. Lead them to the scripture. Show them these things like you've shown me. Show them how to let it go like you've shown me. How to deal with it, process it, and move on so that your light will emanate from them. How much change can we make merely by walking the walk you called us to and everyone around us seeing it? How amazing is it? How awesome is it? And how easy is it? It only seems hard. The first step is the hardest one. After that, it's a piece of cake. Lord, in Matthew 5, 9, it said, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. How do we become peacemakers? Forgiveness. Letting that hatred and that anger and that resentment go. And never obtaining that again. Never hanging on to that stuff again. It creates a sense of peace. And we're surrounded by it. And it makes peace in others too. Some won't obtain it. Some won't hang on to it. Some want their pain. No, that's, that's on them. We can't help them. But we can sure set an example. Lord, help us be that example. Help us to set that goal and that status. To set that bar so that others will see it. The only way we can obtain what you have prepared and presented for us is if we listen to your word and apply it in our personal lives, in our personal walks, and then show it to everyone else. Merely by living it. Just by living it. You didn't show anybody anything special whenever you were on this earth. You healed some people and did some a few miracles, but you were just like everyone else in your appearance in that. But you walked the walk. You talked the talk. You lived the life, the way, as an example to those around you. And how many people got changed because of it? Because they, it dawned on them, oh, wow, this is God in the flesh standing right in front of me. Whoa. And when we do that, we don't become God in the flesh, but we become you in the flesh. Because your light, your energy, your peace, your mercy, your love emanates from us. Help us emulate you. Help us take on the qualities that you have and present them in our lives to the people around us that we may be a blessing to them and lead them to you for salvation. Lord, I didn't lift any names up tonight because this was such an important topic. I wanted to cover this. This forgiveness is a key thing, a very important thing because we know that if we hang on to that stuff, it eats us out, hollows us out inside so that we are nothing. The Holy Spirit can't work with that. And it was very important that I touch on the subject. It is so important. We, as born-again believers, be that type of person. And that's why I ask you by intercession, help all of us learn this. Help this video spread so that people can start to think about these things and change. How much will you be glorified if even a tenth of us on the earth do this? A 15th, a 20th, do this. A fifth, even better. 80%, 100%. Life would change on this earth. And when we take that stuff away and get rid of it, that's one less thing Satan can use to attack us and to influence us and to harass us. Let it go. Teach us how to let it go. We love you, Lord, and we thank you for these insights, for these amazing insights and the clarity that your word is saying to us and that you're changing hearts. You're answering my prayers. You're answering our prayers. 
You are responding to us wanting these things because we have the desire to want them. And I see you doing it, and it's amazing. Thank you, Lord, for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for your great love. Thank you for your salvation, for your blood atonement paying for our sins. Teach us your ways that we may walk as you walked. We can't do it perfect, but we know we can get close. And on that day of redemption, we know you, because of your word, you will finish the work you started in us. Lord, help us attain what your will is for us in our lives. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for joining me for evening prayer. If there is anyone you know that needs to hear this message, you guys know, all of you know, you can share any of my videos. I have, I lay no claim to any of this. This isn't me. This is all the Lord. This is all Holy Spirit. I have no, I'm just a face and a name that's delivering the message. It could be any of a billion people doing the same thing. Share this with someone so they can get this concept and cleanse their lives, cleanse their heart, and it, and achieve a brand new awakening in the spirit because it changes you. It makes you different. And it helps. And it changes the people around you. It is an amazing thing. I love you guys very much. I pray these blessings for you. I pray this peace, this amazing peace for you. And this cornerstone understanding of forgiveness across the board. God did it for us. Jesus earned it for us. It's not a big thing for us to do it to everyone around us. And to show them who Christ truly is. I'll see you guys in the next video.